Welcome to decaf. Happy uh, Thursday afternoon. Mark, is that de is that truly a decaffeinated drink? Because mine is not. Oh, yeah, I have a it's a sparkling water. Oh, wow. Well, I'm drinking unsweet tea from Chopped. I just went to Chopped. It was a great time. I, you, that means it is, that? it is, there is no caffeine then, right? If it's. No, there's just no sugar. Oh, uh, okay. Tea well, still has caffeine. Whatever. <laughs> Never oh my mind. Gosh. Mark calls me an idiot all the time. And then he says things like that. And... Well, just, uh, I'm not into the, I'm not into the tea thing. I don't know. I, I actually didn't know that hot tea had caffeine until not that long ago. Okay, well, that it's is- It's not enough. That's why it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't even register for me. <laughs> it is a lot. Tea has a lot of caffeine in it. Not compared to coffee. That's true, but <laughs> it still does. Anyway, you're exhausting me. I'm like, I, I, can't, I can't even with you right now. Um, so last week we talked about, last week when we did the podcast, first of all, I think we're both in a much better headspace because last week when we did the podcast, things were popping off going insane because that morning Mayor Cooper had announced that he was going to- cut the 34% property tax increase that he and the Metro Council imposed on Nashville last year. And then as it turns out, that's not exactly what was going on. We didn't have all the details yet, but now we have details. And Mark, let's just unpack what happened, what the reaction was, and what we think is going to happen next. Yeah, well, Mayor Cooper said he's going to reverse the 34% tax hike that they passed, which is great. I mean, that would have been a great thing. It was not even close to being the truth. Um, <laughs> all he was talking about, which is like, it's this state mandated idea that every four years you need to reassess the housing things. And if housing prices go up, then the tax, the tax rate goes down a little bit. But the, your overall tax rate could go up because your house is worth a lot more. I mean, all tax, like rates have only gone up in, in Nashville over the past four years. It was a super weird thing where he just, and it was, he didn't miss, he didn't misspeak. He basically just lied. I mean, I mean, he completely said something that wasn't true. And he said, because of my fiscal stewardship, we're going to be able to cut taxes. They're not cutting taxes. They're just, they're assessing what the home values are worth and they're worth different amounts now. And they have to by state law. It's not right. because of him. Yeah. Um, and he said that was an, Every I, I have never seen somebody say something and everybody from every political Everyone. persuasion was like, what are you talking about? That's not true. Yeah. And, and his office refused to walk it back. Every media outlet, including a lot of his like backers, even questioned him. So it was just this weird misstep um, where he was intentionally being deceiving. And I don't know why. I guess he maybe the new Vanderbilt poll, which is a terrible poll anyway, showed his approval rating had gone way down. Maybe he thought it would be a good way to get it to go back up. I, I don't know. Um, but it was super weird. Yeah, he did like not cut taxes. Yeah, I mean, I hope he does cut tax on top of that. But from everything we've seen so far, there's no tax cut. It's just something that is required by state law. So it was just a really strange day. And we didn't know what was going on. And I know that as soon as uh, we got that kind of text in the morning from Justin, he's like, yeah, I, he's not cutting taxes. I don't know what's going on. And then right. the, the reaction was swift and very strong. Answer. I mean, it was a PR nightmare for the mayor. I mean, I live just just so to give a, a picture of how swift it was. I live 17 minutes away from where I go to Pilates. I got the text that he had announced it when I was leaving Pilates, and before I even got home, all of Mark was texting us that all of the news outlets were already jumping on this and saying it's not true, it's not true, it's not true, it's not true. I mean, people. It, it took less than 30 minutes for the man. It's like, like a like a morning cool. show, like a, a natural morning show. Like he's doing a bunch of the shows and saying the same thing. So it wasn't even like a. He did not just say something by accident. I mean, we all do that, right? Where he says, "Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it that way." It was like this was intentional and it was consistent. And I don't know where his head was that it was. It was. It was really just shocking. And I think he thought he could maybe just get away with it and be like, oh yeah, some people might have their taxes cut a little bit by this. So like, I'll say it was because of my fiscal stewardship and all this stuff. And it's like, what? And, and it, a lot of his allies turned against him, which was interesting too, I thought. I know. I think it's nice. You see a little bit of integrity, a little bit of honesty when someone's allies turn against them when they actually do a bad thing. <laughs> he actually did a bad thing. It's and, not and it's I mean, it's dangerous too, because if you have you know, Nashville citizens saying, I'm going to pay less in taxes this year. It's like, that's a huge deal that you plan for. When you think about your property tax, some people pay it once a year. And if you're like, oh, I'm going to pay less. That's really great. And you hear from the mayor, of course you believe that. And it's not true. And in some cases, if not most cases, it's probably going to be more you're paying next year. Okay. So it, it was really, really irresponsible. And I, that was, I, we disagree with a lot of things he's done as mayor, a lot of things. This was his biggest blunder. Like th th this was his biggest blunder. Just like this, not like, oh, we disagree with this policy. Like this was just a clear mistake on his part. Yeah. And I don't know what advisor told him to do this, but 
they should not be employed anymore. <laughs> yeah, they should uh, They should have their speaking privileges revoked. Um, so that was wild and crazy. And I guess we'll see what happens next. But it goes, it leads straight into something that we talked about a couple of weeks ago with um, Justin actually wrote about it in a blog post about the Biden administration trying to restrict states and local governments from cutting taxes if they receive federal money. What in the world do they think? I mean, in no way should a federal government be able to tell a local government or a state government that they are not allowed to cut taxes. It's really manipulative to say your federal funds are tied to, your federal funds that your taxpayers are also paying for are tied to you not cutting taxes. I mean, is it just me or is that like absolutely insane? Yeah, I mean, it's in because of this stimulus bill, which nobody agree with anyway. I mean, even Governor Lee's like, we don't like, we don't agree with this. We don't want it. I mean, our tax dollars are going to be spent on this. I mean, we, we have to pay for this bill in some way. So like the idea is like, oh, we're going to take these tax from you and we're going to give some of it back or whatever back, but you can't rate, you can't lower tax. Like just because you don't know to handle your money. We do. And like, if we have, if we do a good job, which we continue to do, why should we not be allowed to raise taxes as a, you know, a string attached from a federal bailout that we also are paying for. It's not like we're not paying for this. I know. Um, it's like, where do they think they're getting that money? It's from us. I know. And it's, it's just, uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense. And I think it's just a way to be like, we don't want you to cut taxes ever because they don't believe in it. I mean, I mean, most Democrats don't believe in ever cutting taxes for any reason. And this is just kind of his way of being like, oh, if I say this, you know, maybe I'll win union support, I'll win liberal support for it. But it's, it does it, it, it's just so manipulative and it, and it's, it's just insane. It, why would we do that? Um, because we are taking this money that we're paying for it, it, it. They're acting like they're giving us this pot of money that we had no, like, it's like, Oh, this is completely separate from you. So if you want this money, you can't cut taxes. Like it's our money. You're giving it back in a different way and in a less efficient, like I wish, how about you don't raise our tax at all? How about that? How about we don't put any money towards it and then we don't get any money back? How's that sound? And you can make all the other- How about for a year we don't pay, how about for a year we don't pay income taxes? We don't want your stimulus. Pay income taxes. Yeah, really. How about for the rest of our lives? We don't and pay. even Governor Lee, like in, in our talk with us, he's like, yeah, we don't need this stimulus money. We are well, you know, we're well run enough that we don't need it um, because of the way we've done things. The fact is we still have to pay for it, um, but it's not something that because Tennessee has been so well, you know, governed compared to the rest of the country. Right. It's something we don't need. And you're, you're, you're forcing this stimulus on us and then you're forcing us not to raise taxes. It's just, it's not, it, it feels like President Biden and his staff is just being kind of almost like, I disagree with you. So I'm going to, I'm going to make you feel bad about this. Or I, something. Know, I, I just don't, I don't care for it. When, when all that started happening and, and uh, President Biden and a lot of other notable people on the left, when he said that no amendment to the constitution is absolute, did you see all of those memes that came out online that yeah. said, well, then let's not, let, then the, the amendment about paying taxes is not absolute. Let's just stop paying our taxes. Yeah. It's like- Also the amendment about slavery. So like, I mean, there's a lot of <laughs> issues with that. I mean, it was, I know it, it was, a, and I guess, I guess technically he's not wrong about that. I mean, you can change the constitution, but that was sure. a really boneheaded thing to say. And I think this whole move is boneheaded. It just seems, it seems vindictive. That's all this is. It seems like a vindictive move for people who have managed their finances better than DC has. Agreed, 100%. If you want to read about that, read about it at beacontn.org because Justin- really let loose on it. And I love when Justin gets mad about things because when he writes about it with passion, you can tell. Um, another bonehead thing that has gone on, um, the George Floyd, Derek Chauvin trial was this week. And after the verdict came down, Nancy Pelosi said she looked to the skies and thanked George Floyd for giving his life for justice. Yep. Okay. <laughs> First of all, how tone deaf can you be? That Okay, it, I, I've thought for 15 years that every single time Maxine Waters or Nancy Pelosi open their mouths, it can't get more tone deaf. And then it gets worse and it gets worse and it gets worse and worse and worse. And I think we have seen tragedy after tragedy, Democrats and a lot of Republicans too, but I'm gonna choose to talk about the female Democrats right now. They, they use it as a talking point and it could not sound less in touch with someone who has an actual heart. It's like Tin Man. It's like a Tin Man getting up there and saying something. And 
it was it was disgusting to see. But Mark, we can talk about the trial in itself. I just well, have to really slam Nancy Pelosi. I, I agree, and, and Maxine Waters, I mean, obviously, like was was essentially. It, it, it's hard for me to to understand why somebody who said okay, and I, I think you can you can have arguments on both sides. But people who said, you know what, Trump clearly caused the riots, right? It's because of his rhetoric. I can understand. I actually understand that argument. I do. I mean, I'm not saying that he's responsible for it, but I understand why you think he added to that. But you can't say that and at the same time say, oh, Maxine Waters, oh no, she was just calling for peaceful demonstrations. Even like she said, be more confrontational, but she meant in the Martin Luther King sense. Like you can't have it both ways. Yeah. And, and somebody was, uh, somebody shot at a police officer later that night. Um, it's a, uh, and yeah, I mean, Lancey Pelosi just like, it's as if like George Floyd sacrificed his life on purpose. Like that was like he made a choice. He was, Yes, he was killed. He did not have a choice in that. It's like, just because you want to use him this way. Um, it was a, yeah, I talked a lot about this. And I mean, just, this is all my personal opinion. So it seemed like the verdict was correct in, in that case. I think if I was on the jury, that's what I would have done from everything I paid, paid attention to. Um, there is one thing that's concerning to me. And it's less so with this case. I do think that one thing that made me nervous is I, I saw somebody who testified in there. They got their house vandalized. Um, in a lot of cases, I feel like the jury would have been scared to say that he was not guilty. And I don't think that's a good precedent set. I think in this case, to me, it was fairly cut and dry. So he was guilty. But what about a case in the future, you know, where something's not as cut and dry and you're like, oh, okay, these people, I mean, even, I mean, talk about that, that shooting in, in um, Ohio where some, a, a, a girl who was trying to stab somebody was shot and, P, and LeBron James, essentially oh, another yeah. deaf person said the same thing. Like, in that case, if you have a jury that's scared because they have to worry about their own lives, if they if they rule the way they feel that they should rule, um, that's a scary concept for America. And I do feel like that's kind of what Maxine Waters was saying. So it was, I think they got the verdict right. It seemed like, of course, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not a judge, but from the things I did watch, which was not, it seemed like that was it. I mean, there's a video to show it, but it's concerning about cases that are not as cut and dry that people, even if they feel a certain way, are going to feel like, well, I do feel this way, but I don't want to have my family, you know, murder. I don't want to have my house burned down. I don't want to have my house vandalized. So I'm going to do, say this because I want to go along with the crowd. That's not a functioning democracy. No. Well, and that's, that's justice system non-existent. I mean, that, that just completely puts the justice system in, in non-justice system territory. And another thing that I didn't even know you were going to say that, but I was going to bring up Daniel Horowitz. He's, he's a friend of ours, a lawyer in town in Nashville, and he was tweeting last night about bad legal takes about people on Twitter saying that the lawyer who defended the police officer, um, Derek Chauvin, the guilty police officer, that that lawyer should go to jail with him. And it's like, this is America. You have a right to be represented by a lawyer in court. Like, like those you have are to be. Right. And guess what? Like he, he would have had to have somebody do it for free. Like that is part of our legal system. And yeah. people who don't, of course, our legal system is not perfect, but a lot of the good things about it are what people are criticizing. I saw another tweet saying, you know, America's system's messed up when you you saw somebody murder somebody else and they're going through a trial. It's like how that that shows exactly how great our system is, that everyone is innocent until proven guilty. And yeah. there was a video of it, and that's why he was that's why he was that's why he's convicted. The whole idea of being able of being innocent until guilty is one of the things that is great about our system yes and it's like it, you know we we can read about history and like even like in biblical times when that was not the case and people were just absolutely put to death immediately for doing something wrong the reason i mean if it was you how would you feel if yeah. it was you wouldn't you like to say and so before i think we just need to think before we speak before you say that his lawyer deserves to be put in jail he had to, this, this lawyer had to defend someone who he probably thought was guilty the whole entire time, but he still did it because that's why, because that's part of the American justice system. And so I just think that bad legal takes on Twitter was probably working overtime these past yeah, years. And, 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 it's, and it's highly emotional, right? That was part yeah. of it. It's highly emotional. Thing. So like, I get why people, why it bothers people. Like, you can't just take away the whole system of like innocent until proven guilty. That's the whole point of this thing. I know. So I'll be interested to see. You know, the the judge in the case did say that Maxine Waters' comments uh, could make it so that he gets an appeal on this, a successful appeal, which I thought was interesting because I wouldn't have thought of that again. I'm not on the Yeah, I mean, but, and, and I get it. And I'm not, I mean, again, I'm not legal. I'm not sure that it, it goes to that thing, but I mean, she at least, I mean, she should feel ashamed of the way she acted there. I mean, and like, she's calling for more rioting and she's saying if, you, if they don't have the, the outcome I like that we should ride, like that is not, and even if it was the wrong outcome, that's not the way to deal with it. It's a kindergartner mindset. If you don't do what I want you to do, then I'm going to burn everything down. You've given her a lot of credit, Connor Kindergartner. I feel like it's, <laughs> I think like it's, it's a little bit, like, too, little bit too intelligent for what she is. I mean, I, 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 she is just, I mean, there's, there's a lot of members of Congress 
um, both sides that are just not smart people. And she is one of the few things I agree with when, when Trump said that her intelligence level is not great. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, I would love for you to write like a like a roast column for a newspaper. Where did the muckraker type stuff? I would love. Oh for man, you to yeah, no, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of um, yeah, there's a lot of dumb people on both sides. But she like when she keeps doing something, like she can't get any dumber, and then she does. <laughs> well, her whole career is, is based on that uh, that mouth of hers, so I, I feel sure that she's not going to stop anytime soon. Um, so last topic is our fun topic. I've been trying to get Mark to do this for weeks now. Um, one album, you can take one album with you to a deserted Island. It's all you can ever listen to ever, ever, ever. What is your, do you want me to go first? Or do you want to go first? Yeah, you can go first. Okay. Blink 182 greatest hits. It is. A um, greatest hits album? Yes, they have a greatest hits album and a new <laughs> song was on it. It was called Not Now. Oh, it's it's just Girl at the Rock shows on there. Like all my favorite songs are on Blink-182's greatest hits and it's a really cute uh, album cover. Mark? It's crazy you can just do a greatest hits. Like you just need to have like four hits. Like I, I saw like a, I, I mean, I know Blink-182 is a little bit bigger than that, but like I saw somebody where it's like, oh, like some guys like Eiffel 65's greatest hit. Not exactly that, but <laughs> it was something like that. It's like, you have like three hits. What do you mean? How do you have a greatest hits? You have like one album. <laughs> I know. Yeah, yeah. Like two, wow. two songs. But yeah, people like people can do a greatest hits album, like no matter what. You have one album, one greatest hits. Just do your first album. You don't need to do it. <laughs> Just do that one. Yes. But Blink One yes. greatest uh, hits. So I, I have a surprise one. So second was All the Pay Money You Can Buy by Fast, but that's not the one I'm going to. Um, Slow Heart by Kit Moore. It's just such a good album. And I remember when it came out, I think you may have told you this. Like, I don't think you knew who he was at that point, but I was like, this album was so good. And, from from one to 12 every song was great and it just it's an excellent album like he's not my favorite artist but that album is special I think that and Rolling Stone I think even named one of their top five albums of the year and they never do that for country albums but like Slow Heart is the best country album of all time in my opinion that's incredible okay well we have country and we have punk rock so that pretty much tells you everything you need to know about me and Mark <laughs> uh, what we chose there for country and punk rock but let's keep doing fun things like this on our on our last segments uh that, that's going to be good. Mark, any final thoughts before we sign off for the week? No, I think I'm good. I'm excited to get, hopefully it doesn't snow again, but I'm excited for, for the nice weather in Texas. I'm going there tonight. So I'm looking forward oh, to Oh, that's so great. Well, and I will, uh, I'll be joining next week, but then the following week I'll be at the beach. So let's hope that the weather, I saw a funny meme online today that said God knew that our bodies weren't ready for summer. And so he made it cold again. So we have a few <laughs> more weeks to do a couple extra workouts to get that's our beach pods ready. Um, have a great week, everyone. We'll see you later.